We're now going to talk about another case study that will demonstrate a bunch of operators in the observable class. And, and these couple next case studies also show a little bit of flowable stuff just for kicks, although uh, it's largely focusing on the observable class. And this is case study EX4. And so it's going to demonstrate how you can use a bunch of observable operators like from array, map, flat map, and so on, as well as a factor method that converts an observable to a flowable that's kind of interesting to understand to create, multiply, and display big fraction objects asynchronously. And it also shows some single operators as well. We haven't talked as much in this class about singles, but we're going to talk a little bit about them here. And they're important, although we didn't focus on them as much because they weren't as much of what we're doing in our programming assignment. And then finally, we're going to show how to create and use a generic blocking subscriber. And this is something that um, is what requires the use of flowable in order to do this. And it demonstrates how you can write a subscriber that blocks if you don't want to use the blocking subscribe terminal operation for whatever reason. OK, so you can find all this code in the EX4 project in the reactive observable folder in my live lessons GitHub repository. So here we are in the project for case study EX4 in IntelliJ. And if you take a look at this project, this one uses the async task barrier to register methods under test. And we have two of them here. We're just going to focus on the first one in this example. And this one's called test fraction multiplications blocking a subscriber, which is a bit of a mouthful, but it describes what it is we're going to look at. And it's going to demonstrate how you can have an asynchronous uh, stream and a blocking subscriber implementation. And as usual, that is going to be having these two methods registered. We run them asynchronously in the background by calling async task run tasks, async task barrier run tasks, and then we block until all the tasks are done. And then we return and we print out the number of tests that completed successfully. So let's go take a look at this implementation. So here is the method that we're looking at test fraction, multiplications, blocking subscriber. First thing we do is we make a string builder to keep track of the results. And we start printing some stuff out in the string builder. Then we go ahead and create an array of big fraction objects, which have numerators and denominators as shown here. We have four of them. We could put as many as we want, of course. And then we go ahead and we make ourselves an instance of blocking subscriber. And we're going to look at blocking subscriber in just a second. But you can see that blocking subscriber takes four parameters. The first parameter is the on next consumer. The second parameter is the error handling uh, parameter. And I take it back. I didn't put the error handling parameter because we didn't care about that. But the second parameter is what we do when we're going to be done, when on complete is called. And the third parameter is the value to pass to the subscription request on the subscription object. And in this case, we're not concerned with back pressure in this example. So we're just going to say, send it as fast as you'd like. So that's what we use blocking subscriber for. Let's take a look at blocking subscriber. Blocking subscriber is a generic uh, subscriber. So it's an implementation of the subscriber interface that handles uh, blocking. And it doesn't, well, it, it could handle back pressure maybe, but we're not concerned with that here. And you can see that what we do to make this a blocking subscriber is we use a countdown latch. Countdown latch is a really interesting barrier synchronizer that's defined in the object-oriented portions of Java. It's been around since 2004 or so when Java 5 came out. And basically what it does is you can use it to essentially suspend a thread until something changes. And when something changes, one thread can increment the latch or count down the latch. And that will then let whoever's waiting proceed. And so that's why we're going to use this for blocking purposes. Just see how it gets used in a second. We then define a bunch of fields that keep track of the consumer to invoke on each next value. So when you have uh, on next. That's going to go ahead and be called. We have something that deals with errors and something that deals with complete operations. 
and then we keep track of the number of elements to request from the upstream publisher, which in this case is just going to be send them all and uh, do it in all one fell swoop. We're not concerned about back pressure here. The constructor just sets all these fields and most importantly for our purposes, because it's a blocking subscriber, we create a new countdown latch with an initial count of one, which says anybody who's going to await on this blocking subscriber will have to wait until either an error or a complete signal occurs. Here's the await method itself. You can see what await does is uh, when the await method is called, it forwards to the latches await method, which again will block until somebody increments that count, or sorry, decrements it by one, allowing the waiting thread to proceed. And so that's what that does. On subscribe just requests, says, please give me all the data or whatever the value is, which is max value in our case. And then the on next method just forwards to the consumers on next or accept method, passing in the type T, whatever we're generating in the stream. So you can see it just forwards it through. On error, forwards to the error consumers accept method, and then releases the latch by counting down by one. And on complete does the same thing. It calls the run method on the uh, complete consumer. It should be runnable probably, but they think they call it a consumer in the documentation. And uh, so we'd say, go ahead and let me know we're done and then release the, release the latch, release the lock here. Okay, so that's the blocking subscriber. Let's pop back over here and then see how this program works. So what the program's going to do is it's going to use the from callable method defined on single. Remember, single is like a very stripped down observable that only emits one value or throws an error. So in this case, we're gonna emit one big fraction large random number that's reduced. So that's what from callable does. It just it goes ahead and emits that. Uh, we've looked at make big fraction many times, and so I'm not going to cover that again here, but uh, that's what this does. So we, we emit one value. And then we use a very interesting method defined on the single class called flat map observable. And what flat map observable does is it takes the value that was emitted from the single and then it's going to return an observable. And what we do here is we basically use this to implement kind of a, a nested for loop, if you will. It's the, the functional equivalent, the reactive equivalent of a nested for loop. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say when this big fraction is emitted from here, then go ahead and create an observable from that big fraction array. So we have one random big fraction, and then we take our big fraction array and turn that into an observable. And then we're going to use the flat map concurrency idiom to go ahead and multiply that one big fraction that was emitted from singles from callable method by each of the big fractions in the big fraction array that we just turned into an observable. So that's why I said this is like a loop, if you will. And we're going to run each of those multiplications in a, uh, in a background thread from the computation thread pool. So what's going to occur here is we're going to have basically this, this big fraction, the first one, the random one, is going to be used to, to multiply all the other ones. And then we're going to say something interesting. We're going to say, please convert this observable into a flowable using the buffer back pressure strategy, which basically says, I don't care how fast the data comes in, buffer it. Now, in this case, we only have a few number of items, so it's not going to run out of space. But we need to give it some kind of buffer strategy, or some kind of back pressure strategy, so we give it buffer strategy. And then we say subscribe the blocking subscriber to handle all the events that come through here. And the last thing we do is then we then say, hey, blocking subscriber, wait for all the processing to finish. And this will then block, all the processing will take place, and await returns a completable that says to the async task bearer, I'm done. So you can wrap up if I was the last task running. Now, we could have used blocking subscribe here. But just for kicks, I decided to implement a blocking subscriber just to show you how you could do that in a nice generic way, because there could be reasons for that, and show this approach. It should come as no surprise that blocking subscribe 
uses a technique very much like what's shown here in order to block the caller until all the events are processed. They have a, a countdown latch-like approach buried deep in the bowels of the RX Java framework to do that. Okay, so that is the code for this case study. Let's now go ahead and run, whoops, wrong, this is the wrong thing. Let me stop that, um, let's go over here and we'll run this program. And this particular example, of course, will run both of the tests, but we only care about one of them. We only care about the one that was the test fraction multiplications blocking subscriber. And as you can see, it ends up multiplying that random big fraction by all the other big fractions in the big fraction array. And then we end up with these results. And as you can see, these are absolutely ginormous big fractions. This stuff goes on and on and on forever. Um, and that's why I like to use this example because it chews up a lot of CPU time and actually does in fact benefit from concurrent and or parallel processing because we're doing those things on different cores on my multi-core laptop. Okay, so that's the end of this example. And so what you really should come away with this uh, from this is you can make your own subscribers. If you make your own subscribers and you want to use them, you need to convert your observables to flowables because they handle this in a way that observable doesn't in quite the same way. That's very easy to do with the two flowable factor method. And it also demonstrates some interesting features of the single class, especially this flat map observable method that takes one value and then creates an observable. And in our case, we use that to basically do sort of a, a nested loop 